Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. The Lord is great. He's greatly to be praised. He's ready to be honored and adored. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. It is time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. It is time for us to magnify him. That's right. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. Bless him because he's great. Bless him because he's powerful. Bless him because he's mighty. But most of all, bless him because he woke you up this morning. Bless him because you can see this day this morning. Bless him because he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Bless him because he's the great I am. Good morning to you, Sister Cynthia. Bless him because he started you on your way this morning. Bless him because there's nobody like him nowhere in all of the earth. Yes, glory to God. Come on and give God some praise this morning because you know that he continues to bless you. And whatever it is that you do, whatever it is you set out to do, he continues to give you the all that you need. Yes, no matter what it is that we do, we have the opportunity to tell, say just, Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us, oh God. And he does that. Good morning to you, Sister Miller. So good to see you this morning. So good to see all of you that are coming in and, yeah, that are giving God some praise this morning. Good morning to all of you that are coming in this room. Share this word with somebody. Let them know that, good morning to you, Sister Barbara, that we are on and that we intend to bless the Lord. Good morning to you, Sister Nora. Good morning to all of you that are coming in this morning. I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. Father God, we thank you. We bless you, Lord God. We bless you for healing. We bless you, Lord God, for all that you continue to do for the people of God to allow us to know how much you love us and how much, God, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, God, for life, for liberty, for love, God, for happiness, oh God. We appreciate you, God, for the joy that you give the people of God. We appreciate you, God, for healing, God, for the strength that you give us, God, even in our weakness, oh God. We appreciate you, Lord God, for when the enemy comes in like a flood, Lord God, you, God, create a standard against him, oh God, with the word of God that comes out of our mouth and out of our lips, oh God. We appreciate you, Lord God, yes, that when we don't know what to say, Lord God, the spirit of the Lord speaks for us and speaks through us, oh Lord God, and allows the enemy to know that we belong to you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that even God, yes, when we lay down at night, Lord God, you protect us, God, you protect us even in our subconscious, oh God, you protect us, Lord God. Yes, God, moving and abounding for us, God, work on our behalf, oh God. We thank you for the angels, Lord God, that you send, Lord God, out. God, how you, God, allow them, God, to stand watch over us, oh God. Watch over our families, oh God. We thank you for that, God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. For Lord God, how you heal our bodies, oh God. Whatever it might be, God, that is ailing us, God. Whether it, God, might be diabetes, oh God, hypertension, Lord God. Even cancerous cells that might be in our body. Lord God, we know that you, God, are king over all of those things. And Lord, yes, there is a ball and Gilead, God, that can heal. Even that, God, even those situations, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for our families, God, that are, God, that are close to us, oh Lord God, and God, for all that we do in the lives of our families, God, for those, God, that may not know you, we thank you, Lord, that we stand, God, in the gap for them, that we pray, God, for their health. We pray, Lord God, for their souls, oh God. We pray that you will send someone to water the seed of salvation, God, that we planted, Lord God, that we know that you, God, will give the increase, God, in all all things. We thank you, Lord God, yes, that even as we walk this journey of evangelism, Lord God, that our lives, God, shall be an example to them, Lord, that they shall see, God, the works that you do through us, and they will want to come into the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord God, that even when situations arise in our lives, Lord, that we will show them that we are holding on to your powerful hand, oh God, that we will show them that we are not giving in, that we are not giving up, Lord God, and that they will understand that there is hope, God, in all things that are happening, God, in their lives, God, and they will recognize that there is victory. Thank you for victory now in the mighty name of Jesus, and we pray, Lord God, that you will continue, Lord God, to be in our lives. Oh, yes, and we know that you will because your word, God, says that you will never leave us, nor, God, will you forsake us. So we thank you for all things in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, we thank you for this word as I, the woman of God, will decrease in myself and increase in you, the Lord Jesus Christ. You will allow me, God, to speak Speak a word that's going to bring fire and power in the lives of the people, oh God, that they will not walk in the way that they have been walking, Lord God, but they will be filled with
with the power, God, that you have given to them, Lord God, that they will do some things, God, differently that they've done in the past, oh God, that they will, God, yes, have a little bit more courage, oh God, than, 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 they've, than they've had in the past, oh God, oh yeah, God, that they will have a little bit more stamina, God, a little bit more energy, oh God, a little bit more faith, oh God, that they've had in the past, oh God, that they will walk this life out in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you, God, that this word will fall on good ground, God, yes, and it will accomplish the things you said it to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen, and bless the Lord, amen. Good morning to all of you that are joining this morning meditation. Oh, yes, I bless God for the people of God that are coming in and that will share this word with somebody else. But we know that someone needs a word from the Lord that's going to help them along the way. Good morning to you, Sister Sherry. Sister Gail, good morning to you. God bless you, Sister Gloria. Sister Deborah, Sister Donna, uh, good morning to you, Sister Nora. For all of you that are joining, that are joining now and that will join later, I guess I want to bless God for you this morning. I tell you, the Lord is great. He continues to be great in all things that we say. And all things that we do. Listen, I have a little story for you. My um, um, my son sent um, uh, uh, something on, from Instagram. And the Instagram title was, you know, I bought all the parts that you needed. Why are you still broken? And it had to do, the little funny Instagram thing had to do with, um, it was the, the BMW talking to the person. Um, this little Instagram thing. And... When I read that, they sent it to me because I was having some difficulties with my car. And um, the situation happened with the vehicle, and I was having some problems some time ago. And I could tell, you know, when I revved the car, I could tell something was going wrong with it. And I was saying to my son, something is wrong with my car, and, and it, would, it would just act real funny. And so for some while, it was acting funny. I was saying, I got to put it in the shop. I got to put it in the shop. And I, I never did. I know sometimes we do that. We know something is wrong and we don't take care of the situation. That's a message in itself. I could tell it was going wrong. I just didn't do it. And I, I was going to. <clears throat> and then it just started acting real funny. And, and then after a while, you know, I was started and it was just going, eh, 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 eh. it was just acting real funny. You know, just didn't want to start up. And then I said to my son again, I said, you know what? We got to gotta put the car in the shop because I know something's going to happen. It's just, it's just not acting right. And I tell my husband just acting real goofy, you know, just, and I said, I got to you know, get in the shop. But you know, people of God, I never got it to the shop. And then one day it just, I turned the car over. Y'all know what happened, right? I turned the car, you know, pushed the button and the car just didn't stop. Good morning to you, Sister Kim. Didn't start. And I went outside and I, you know, said to my husband, I said, the car didn't start. He's like, what? I, the car didn't start. And I, I just knew it was going to happen, Sister Cynthia. I knew that one day, because it, it was just acting funny, and I knew I should have put it in the shop, but I didn't. So the car didn't start. And so my husband said, you know, something's wrong with the battery. I said, okay. I, uh, so got the car in the shop finally. And um, I said, it can't be the battery. There's something else going wrong with the car. It's just... Uh, it just sounds, seems so weird. Some of, you know, it, I would hit the button and the glove box would open up and lights would come on. Just do a bunch of goofy stuff. So I put the car in the shop, people of God, and the people, man said to me, it's the battery and we got to clean off the induction and, you know, $800. I said, what? He said, $800. I said, just to change my battery and clean off whatever you said. He said, yep. He said, I know it's just prices are I said okay you know so I get the car I said I said I don't think it's that I said I think it's something else he said well ma'am if, if it's something else you know we stand by our you know stand by our parts and you bring it back to us I said okay yeah so people of God that was just like I don't know I picked the car up on Thursday or Friday so sure enough I'm driving the car and it must have been Yesterday, probably. The car did it again. It's like doing this goofy thing again. I thought, what in the world? I, I don't want to pay $800 for them to put a battery in my car and it's still doing the same thing. And so my son, he sends this little Instagram thing. It says, I bought all the parts. Why are you still broken? I'm thinking, you know what? Yeah, why are the car still broken? But then as I thought about that thing that he sent in the wee hours of the morning, the spirit spoke quickly to me. He said, this is not about your car. He says, because I paid it all too. He says, and I can say the same thing for the people of God. 
He says, you may think this is about the car. He says, you may think this is about that. He says, but I say the same thing. He says, I paid it all. He says, I gave, oh my God, the ultimate sacrifice. I gave my life. He says, I'm wondering the same thing. Why? Why are we still broken? In the Instagram post, I want to say this because I want to make sure that I don't get any trouble with Facebook or Instagram. That was from a movie that 50 Cent was in. The movie was from 2011. It was, the movie was called All Things Fall Apart. 50 Cent, 50 Cent said, I just wanted your money. <laughs> but the Lord is saying, I gave the ultimate sacrifice. I gave my life. He said, I'm wondering why we're still broken. He said, I, I, I paid the price on the cross so that you could be free. Glory to God. I, I shifted quickly, people of God, because when, when my son sent that to me, I, I initially thought about the car, but then immediately, immediately, I went to the spirit because the spirit immediately quickened me. And he says, I'm saying this to the people of God. And I want you to share it with them. He says, because I paid it all. I've given them everything that they need for life, for liberty, for joy, for protection, for peace, to live out their purpose in me, for guidance. He says, I've given them everything they need for comfort. He says, I've given them absolutely everything they need. He says, there's no reason for us to still be walking around broken. He says, as a matter of fact, the Bible says, in Isaiah 53 and 5, he says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He says, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our, for our peace was upon him. He says, and by his stripes, we are healed. He says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Now, I know a lot of times we use that from the standpoint of physical healing. But the Lord is saying to us and letting us know each and every day that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed, healed from our transgressions, healed from our sins, healed from the things that hold us bound, healed, my God, from the things that keep us in the enemy's camp. We're healed from the bondages of sin and death. We are healed from those things. He says the chastisement for our peace. The things that keep us from having peace, the things that hold us bound to anxiety, the things that hold us bound to trans to, to, to transgressions and the, the things that hold us bound to depression, the things that hold us bound to oppression. He said that was upon him. He took on all of that. Glory to God. He took on everything, glory to God, that was holding us underneath where we needed to be. And he says, and by his stripes, we are healed. He says, I paid for everything, glory to God, that would cause you not to be broken. I paid, glory to God, for absolutely everything that would cause you to be free. I paid for everything, my God, that would keep you healed. Every piece, every part, my God, every part of it, every piece of it, everything that you need. He said, you're not going to be like Tina's car. Glory to God. You're not going to, oh my God, rumble and rattle, my God, and fall apart. Because I paid for everything that's going to keep you together. Everything is going to fix what is broken. You don't have to keep going back to the shop, to the potter's house over and over and over again. Glory to God. Because he already paid the price for your sins. He already paid the price for our brokenness. And my God, and he said that sacrifice, that one sacrifice, that one time, Sister Kim, he said that was sufficient to bring us healing. That It was sufficient to bring us wholeness. Oh, I see it, Sister Sherry. Thank you, God. Oh, my God. If I was in church, I would tell somebody just to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Colossians 2, 13 and 14, it just simply says, and you being dead in your trespasses and in your uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made us alive together with him, having forgiven you of all of your trespasses. 
Code, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. Thank you, God, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it. He nailed it to the cross. Oh, somebody say he nailed it. Oh, glory to God. He did it. He did that for us. The people of God, as I, as I thought about this theme, he says, oh, I've already paid for all the parts. I've already paid for everything. Why are we still broken? And as I think about, you know, when I look at these examples I, and I look about, you know, in the Bible, I think about King Solomon looking at somebody, my God, who God blessed with absolutely everything. Hey, he, he blessed him with wisdom. He blessed him with wealth. He blessed him with power. The Bible says it's beyond measure. Oh, you can find that in 1 Kings chapter 3. But despite the blessings that Solomon had, oh, in his later years, come on, he was marked with God, disobedience to God. Solomon allowed all of his wives to turn his heart away from God, people of God, leading him to idol worship and he neglected God's com com uh, commandments. And how many times do we do the same thing? Oh, yeah, we may start out good, but, but then we allow others, people of God, to speak into our ear. We allow others because of what we see them doing. Maybe to turn our heart from God. Oh, my God. And even Solomon, despite having been given wisdom and knowledge that came directly from God, Solomon allowed his desires and his worldly pursuits, people of God, to lead him into brokenness and to lead him into disobedience. Are you hearing from God or are you hearing from what other body, somebody else says? Are you hearing from what somebody else has done? Are you hearing from, oh my God, from what you see with your own natural eye instead of your spiritual eye? Are you, or is that leading you from where God needs for you to be? Where God needs for you to put your hands, my God? Is it leading you from where God needs for you to help somebody else? People of God, are you hearing from God where God can, oh my God, where God can help and bless you? And Solomon's story just serves as a, um, as, a, as a story about the dangers of trusting in worldly wisdom and trusting in worldly pleasures rather than trusting in God. It reminds us, my God, of, 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 of even those who have been given great blessings, how we can fall into brokenness if we don't remain faithful to God, faithful to his commandments. The people of God, even we look at our own children, look at, look at this world today and how we feel like maybe we've given them everything and maybe we haven't, but maybe we feel like we have. We've given them everything. We, we feel like we paid the price. We've given them everything they need for life and for health and for happiness. Oh, glory to God. And we feel like, why are you still broken? Why are you still strung out on drugs? Why are you still addicted out here on alcohol and why are you still doing things, my God, that is not conducive to your productivity in society? People of God, we've got to understand, my God, that God is King of Kings and God is Lord of Lords. And there are some things, my God, that we've got to understand that we're still living in bondage to Satan and spiritual wickedness. Because although Jesus paid the ultimate price for our freedom from sin and its consequences, we still have a choice to accept or reject his sacrifice. People of God, we still got a choice. Oh, glory to God. We, we, sometimes we, we have not accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So sometimes we remain under the influence of Satan. We remain under the influence of spiritual wickedness. Come on here, somebody. Oh, glory to God. Hey, come on. He's given us everything we need. But we still have to accept what it is that the Lord has given to us. And sometimes we think about our young people, but people of God, it's not just the young people. Because sometimes, glory to God, is us most senior people as well. We're still living in a life, my God. And the Bible says in John 3, 6, and God so loved the world that he gave. His only and begotten son, the whosoever would believe in him. Come on, we would not perish, but we would have eternal life. He loved us so much that he gave. But we've got to love him so much 
that we will receive. Oh, glory to God. We've got to receive. it, And even those, my God, who have accepted Jesus, we still, people of God, we still face spiritual battles. Because we recognize that we live in a fallen world where evil still exists. But we recognize that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's where the Bible comes in where it says we've got to put on the whole armor of God. Where we've got to continually rely on the strength, on the power of God. We got to rely on that for his protection to resist the temptation and to overcome evil. Glory to God. Because ultimately, God promised, oh my God, ultimately, God promised us that he will one day defeat Satan once and for all. Glory to God. And those who have placed their faith in him will experience the fullness of freedom. The fullness of victory in his presence. Glory to God. But until then, my God, until he comes back again, we've got to continue to stand firm in the faith. Trusting in God's power to deliver us from evil. Oh, my God. And to work all things together for our good. For he says that in Romans 8, 28. If you are the call and you love God and you are the call according to his purpose. He says, whatever it is. It's going to work out for your good. So people of God, this morning, I'm challenging you. Oh my God. I'm challenging each and every one of you. I'm challenging those that you are strong enough to tell and to talk to. Glory to God in regard to this. Yeah, he says, I paid for all the parts. Why are we still broken? My God, I'm challenging all of you to turn it over to the Lord. I'm challenging all of you, glory to God, to accept my God that the Lord has given himself over to you. I'm challenging all of you to accept that the Lord has paid for our salvation, that he has paid for our freedom. And I'm challenging everybody this morning to live in the freedom and the victory that the Lord sacrificed for. Glory to God. And I am encouraging everyone this morning to live that life Oh, come on here, somebody. It's about that life. Hey, God. It's about that life. I'm challenging every last one of you, glory to God, to live that life that he is asking all of us to live. Glory to God. Can you live that life? Can we live the life that the Lord has challenged us to live? A life of holiness. Oh, a life of freedom. Oh, my God. That we don't have to worry about the enemy, my God. We don't have to worry about what he's trying to do in our life. That we do not have to worry about, my God. Hey, glory to God. Hey, we're going to, oh, let me just talk about it for a minute. Hey, my God. We, we don't have to worry about, my God, the enemy trying to overtake us. Because we know that the Lord already is looking on us. Because the Bible says in First Peter, it says, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. Can I encourage you and challenge you? Can I challenge you to be holy? Because the Bible says it is written, be holy for I am holy. Can, can I just encourage us this morning to be holy? Glory to God. Oh my God. It, I want to know if I can do that. Because sometimes we think about what is what is holiness? What is what is that? The Lord says he created us in his likeness and in his image. And if we believe that, and if we believe that we were wonderfully and fearfully made in the image of God, we recognize people of God that he was created and he was wonderfully made. He was he was holy. And if we believe that he was holy and we were created like him, then we we were made to do the same. And as we look at Galatians 5 and 1, the Bible says, stand fast, stand fast. Oh my God, stand fast. That means you stay, be steadfast. You stand there strong and firm. Therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. It says, don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It says, once Christ has made you free. Don't go back. Don't go back. 
That's what holiness is all about. That means not going back to the thing that held you up. Don't go back to the thing that made you, that held you bound. 50 Cent said, I just wanted your money. 50 Cent said, I was just telling you some stuff just to get you up, up where I wanted you to be. The Lord's not like that. The Lord has said, I want you to be free. He says, because he said, whom the son sets free is free indeed. He said, I didn't want you going back and forth like a yo-yo. He said, I wasn't playing games with you. Glory to God. Hey, God. He said, I wasn't playing no games with you. He says, when I made you free, that meant I wanted you to stay free. I didn't want to keep playing games with you in the hands of the enemy. I didn't want the enemy, my God, to, to upset you, cause you to be an anxiety. I didn't want drama and trauma in your life. I didn't want to cause PTSD, my God, for you, that you would be messed up for the rest of your life. That's not what the Lord was saying to you. The Lord was saying, my God, I want you to be free. He said, I don't want you to be free forevermore. Glory to God. So he says, my God, stand. Glory to God fast in the liberty in the freedom my God that the Christ has made you he says I paid it all I already bought the parts glory to God I bought the parts that you needed glory to God to be free I bought the parts glory to God that you needed so that I could snatch you out of the hands of the enemy I know my God that we were born into sin I know glory to God that you were born into this wicked world and this evil world he he said, but I came, my God, that you would have life and have that life more abundantly. I came, my God, that you would have joy, my God, in life. I came, my God, that you would have peace that surpasses all understanding. I came, my God, that you would have joy, unspeakable joy. I came, my God, that you would have everything that you need. I came, my God, that every need that you had would be met, glory to God, because everything, my God, God, you need is in me. I came, my God, that you would not have to have a care and a worry in the world because the Bible says you can cast all of your cares on me. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, in the freedom by which Christ has made us free. Do not be tangled again with the yoke of bondage. I've given you everything that you need. Stand fast in that freedom. Father God, we bless your name. We praise you, oh God, for who you are. We thank Thank you, oh God, that you, Lord God, has made us free. We praise you, Lord God, for continuing to bless the people of God. Lord God, we give your name thanks. We give your name praise, oh God, for the sacrifice that Jesus made by dying on the cross, my God, for our sins. Dying on the cross, oh God, we thank you for the salvation right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for giving your darling son, oh my God, that we, my God, would be free. We thank you for the love of God right now that causes all men and oh my God and all women to be able to continually rely on you, oh God, for our strength. Continually to rely on you, God, for our protection. Continually to rely on you, God, for everything that we need. For we recognize the enemy has no power, oh God, other than the power that we give him. And so today we decree and we declare that we take that power back. We take that authority back. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've given us. We repent right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. For when we gave Satan the power, oh my God, over us. We repent, oh God, right now. For when we did not live, oh God, according to your word. We repent, oh God, for not listening to you, oh God. We repent for our disobedience in the name of Jesus. But God, right now, we thank you that we're walking out your will and your way for our lives. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, oh God, for the path that you have for us. It may not, God, be an easy easy path, but we thank you. It is your way. And we thank you for the will of God for our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we bless your God. Oh, my day will say we bless your God. We bless you, but we bless you, God. In Jesus name, we bless you, God. Oh, but uh, somebody need to give God some praise. Somebody needs 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 to give God some praise. Why wow, somebody needs to give God some praise because I'm not that sure about I, I believe somebody right now just gave their life to the Lord. Somebody rededicated their lives right now. I just believe that. Ha oh, my God. I believe that somebody right now just rededicated themselves to the Lord. Somebody right now knew that they were not in the right place. And I believe right now that somebody just rededicated and recommitted themselves to God. 
They recommitted them their lives to God. That they would walk for him and that they would serve him. And if that's you, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, welcome home. Welcome home. Well, my God, welcome home. And if that's you, you live in the area of South Bend, Indiana. You don't have a church home. I invite you to come. And oh my God, and connect yourself with the church home at Kingdom Life Christian Cathedral, 707 Sherman Avenue, where our arms are wide open, ready to receive you, my God, where you can be developed in the things of God. The Spirit of the Lord is there waiting for you. 707 Sherman Avenue, where the apostle is Michael Patton, and our co-pastor with him, Tina Patton. We would love to have you as a part of our ministry. I love you all with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. You go in peace.